we were talking about the decentralization of, of bargaining. So because of competition, uh, unions and also company agreed to bargain at a more local level on, on, on productivity, but also concession to uh, keep a job at, at a local level. Uh, there was also the development of micro corporatism because of uh, divergence between what local unions were bargaining at, at, at the local uh, level instead of at the master's uh, agreement level. Uh, there was also uh, the bargaining of a new social contract. We were more uh, moving more from job, um, wages issue to job issues. And there was also a strong business case for outsourcing in the 90s. So, um, multi uh, multinational corporation were uh, restructuring their value chain so there was a move between a corporation and what you could outsource um, so uh, we really focus on, on four uh, questions in that research project and it was uh, in the context of uh, reinsource plan of functions uh, in, in the, the North American big tree uh, oil companies uh, what was the rationale for insourcing? What were the main reasons for bringing back jobs in the plants? Uh, what is the impact on local unions, work organization, and working condition? Uh, are uh, insourcing it is, is actually a positive thing happening to workers that their plant get buy back by Chrysler for GM? Are there difference between different type of plants? So between stable and out, that means uh, power steering, uh, engine, or uh, casting plants, uh, or between spun off plant and in source plant, and between US and Canada. And what does it mean also for workers' representation? Quickly, a research design was uh, based, we, we studied 15 cases local plants in the US and Canada. There was four types of plants. So like I said, the first one was in-source plant. The second one was plant that were spun up. So uh, for example, X Delphi plant that was sold to competitors uh, and they are outside now of the big tree. Uh, tree uh, stable in-house plant. And there's a four case that was not on the original design, but we discovered there was some strategy of, of corporation is in situ outsourcing, that means you outsource inside the plant, for example, warehousing or, or a trucking. A uh, job that used to be uh, under a master agreement but are now outsourced, and workers that are uh, working side to side with uh, members that are uh, under the master agreement, but they have a new collective agreement for that type of work that is done. Uh, we did over 72 interviews with unionist managers and uh, retirees, uh, and we also tried to uh, uh, gather where we could collective agreements to track down really the changes in the work organization but also on wages and benefits uh, for uh, these four types of plans. First, uh, why is sourcing happened? Uh, senior managers, and it's really interesting, they said it's, it was a question of control. So during the crisis there was um, bankruptcies and there was some plans that were kind of threatening the whole uh, process of uh, accumulation but also the value chain so they decided to insource back those plans. Uh, two uh, examples uh, are uh, there was a plan in Lockport, New York that was doing uh, radiators that they were sourcing all their radiators of all the GM system in, in, in this plan and they were they could not afford to leave this plant uh, to be uh, either sold or cloud. There was also just in time concern. There was a plant we visited in Guelph that was so tied to the Brenton assembly plant that they, uh, during the um, 2008 and 9 crisis, they had to buy back to uh, really prevent um, um, kind of uh, closure. Uh, there was also the question of cost that was really important, especially in the US. There was a lot of plan that were restructured, so they had like a lower labor cost. So there was a rational for insourcing some work inside those plan, but also rational to not outsource because you had plans that were Delphi that used to pay 25 bucks an hour that were now now 14 bucks an hour, or even lower. We visited a plan in Michigan where the right now the the, the wage scale started at nine bucks an hour. So Trump and his strategy of saying that we must build cars with workers at $16 an hour, you should look at 
the plan that he had. And it's unionized plan. And it's really curious because manager asked the union to reopen the collective agreement because they say there's too much shortage of labor. We, we must. <laughs> so it's, there's there's contradiction in, in managers' discourses sometimes, and it's re it's really funny for for uh, for scholars like us. <laughs> um, Concession also in in, in uh, 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 medical pensions plan moving from DB to DC. Uh, in the U.S., you don't have any pension plan now in the big three. It's all a, only 401k for new hires. Um, there was also a question of historical contingency during the crisis because of Obama administration task force that took um, took uh, control of some companies and they decided to buy back those plans. So these are the, the three main reasons why there was insourcing. And what about then local bargaining? It, was it important? Not that much. Not that much to, uh, for insourcing. First, the reason why, there was a recentralization of collective bargaining. So the, the kind of expectation of this kind of decentralization that you see in, in a lot of research in the 90s. Actually, recentralization of collective bargaining happened in Detroit and especially in the US. Uh, also, there was, in certain plan, there was an exhaustion of, of concession that you can do. You can, you can do some concession on classification wages, but at a certain point, there's kind of a, 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 an exhaustion of productivity improvement that you can do in those plans. But, Unions were not inactive. There was the emergence of what we call lobbying in different uh, aspects. The first one was uh, collective bargaining agreement section on insourcing and outsourcing. So uh, one thing in the US was the business review team that was bargained. So it's UAW people at the national level that actually with management kind of bargain over product all allocation. So they will decide, oh, we could keep that work there or put that work there. So they could kind of have some power uh, with this business review team. There, there's also the local letter of understanding that every union has in, in their uh, their collective agreement. That means when there's a skill trade job that get outsourced, there's a kind of review with management. But it was really used during uh, the past 10 years to uh, kind of keep some work inside. Loving uh, for investment of program, there was some uh, interesting cases where local union were actually kind of lobbying uh, national level uh, manager but also UAW people to bring back some work at the local level and what is funny that was some local manager that asked the local union leader to get into this those channels because he did not have the same power so also there's some contradiction between uh, unions and the management implementation of link practices uh, there's this union in Ohio, it's the IUE that is representing some people in the auto sector. They actually have a lean department that they go inside the plan to implement the lean practices. So it's cutting the branch uh, under your... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you use that, that, that expression in English, but we use it in French. But, uh, <laughs> Building business case, so arguing that our plan is more productive. Uh, that was the case, uh, uh, a plan that we visited in St. Catherine, thanks. Uh, that with the new the new um, scale that you bargain, it will be less costly to build in that plan. And five, there was some bargaining for in-situ outsourcing. So basically in, in Windsor, but also in Lockport, they said, okay, if you you outsource some work, we want union preference. It won't be under the master agreement, but we want to bargain at a, a collective agreement for those guys. There are some limits to uh, lobbying. Uh, because of centralization, we saw this in Spring Hill. At Spring Hill, there used to be a lot of decision at the local level for allocation of product, but because a lot of those functions would bring back in Detroit, it was a, a loss of local capacity. Like I said, uh, weakening bargaining position in Dayton, Ohio, uh, because the IUE does not have the same network that the UAW has. Uh, national uh, leadership also doesn't have all capacity to respond those, uh, uh, to those local demands. And when you're an independent part supplier, it, it also narrows your kind of insourcing possibilities because you're outside of, of, the, uh, of, of, uh, of the dominant OEM. Wow. Sorry for Unifor, but we found not that much similarity uh, differences between uh, 
Unifor and UAW strategies. Uh, there were there were some lobbying strategies also in, in the Canadian auto sector. There was not that much sign of resistance. Uh, there was some union that were more keen on implementing a uh, management-driven measure. More surprising, UAW <coughs> were a bit more critical of the new world of bargaining, and, and our partial explanation is that two-tier has been such, is, it, first, it's, it's a real two-tier, in Canada it's not a, a, a real two-tier, it's, it's a, in progression, but it has been uh, for a much more longer time in the US, so they're a bit more critical, and it really creates tension inside plans. We visited a, a plan in the US uh, near Buffalo that has actually nine tiers of workers, not, not two, three. There's, there's Legacy flow in from Delphi 99, Thames, New Irie. So it's it's really multiple workforce, and the union, the local union, is trying to kind of rebuild this solidarity. So it's it's really tough inside of plan when you have nine different types of workers that are doing. Is some are doing the exact same uh, same kind of job. So. Uh, in terms of work on organization, there was a reduction of classification, obviously. Uh, we tracked that uh, from 2003 to now, there's something that had uh, plus 30 classification for skills trades or, or production workers, and now they're like less than 10, and sometimes it's four or five, so management was kind of uh, able to flexibilize the, the, the workforce. Uh, direct concession, especially in the US, you, uh, you have some plan that are have, have different cost structure than they had prior to OA. There's an example in Ohio, you were paid 20, uh, 20 bucks an hour in 2003, now it's, it's 14 bucks an hour. Uh, Unifor has, your, has used more concession on benefits instead of direct wage concession. And there's a multiple, multiple tier workforce in the US, while in Canada it's generally limited to uh, uh, legacy grow in and some temps, but it's, temps are not that important. So usually it's like 5 or 10 percent of the workforce. 400. No longer? There's 400 in Oshawa, I had 1,800 people. Thanks. So in a nutshell, uh, rational foreign sourcing, control, cost, historical uh, contingency. Local bargaining matters less, lo lobbying matters more. There's, question, there's always this question of power and politics inside of multinational corporation, and I think our research uh, support this affirmation. Uh, especially in the US, all types of plan are associated with, with lower wages. Uh, more flexibility and reduced benefits. Uh, informal channels and powers are, are important, but insufficient for all unions to get influence. There's some that, that are more uh, capable of this, depending on the network and their power. And, and I just want to do some prospects. There, there's, yes, there's this question of retaining job, but there's this question also of confusion between your Workers' uh, representative ideology and, and what are the manager uh, usually do? I mean, historically, bring back bring 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 capital inside plan was a managerial prerogative. Now it's it's kind of unions are really keen at, at, at doing this job. Insourcing and reshoring are happening, but it's not on a massive scale. I talked to an economist last uh, last uh, last week, and he said it's there there was a scale uh, there was a window during the crisis, but after this is mostly stabilized, so the Trump strategy clearly has some limits. And bargaining strategy over an investment, there's rewards in the short term, but also there's risk in the long term. There's clearly contradiction between uh, jobs uh, securing investment, but also the amounts of workers that are needed to perform those jobs. Uh, Ford Essex is a really good example where union people told us yeah, we have this new line to build the, the, the engine, but it takes 30 percent less workers to do it. So there's this tension. So I'm just throwing out this rock. Uh, could we also bargain for a just transition, like some European Union uh, started to talk about? Meaning, yeah, there was there will be less manufacturing jobs, but maybe we could bargain uh, just transition, good job, green job, and I think the idea of our brother of bringing a uh, hybrid uh, vehicle into Oshawa, it's, it's, it could be, could be a, uh, an example of a just transition. Thanks. <laughs>